It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. Caitlin was rocketing down the line. Lately, Caitlin had to do extra work with Connor in the works for his recent accident at the bridge. This meant extra work for poor Caitlin. This also meant that Caitlin had to make many trips. She began to become ever so more tired every day. With the extra trips, Caitlin had to sleep at Tidbit's sheds more often. Normally, Tidmouth's sheds was filled with engines. There wasn't a single spot left. And so, since Edward was a very kind engine, he always allowed Caitlin to sleep in his spot in the sheds. Caitlin thanked Edward every night. Edward then had to sleep at the coachyards with Annie and Clarabelle. He didn't mind it. But Annie and Clarabelle at times could be a bunch of chatterboxes, and every night they talked the night away. Edward worked too hard and he didn't deserve this. He couldn't get a wink of sleep every night. And every night Caitlin still came to Tidmid Sheds, tired from a long day's work. But one night, Edward didn't want to move from his spot in the sheds. He wanted to get some shut-eye for once. Hello, Caitlin. Uh, if it is quite alright with you, I can't sleep a wink in the coach yards, and I really would like to sleep at my own spot tonight. I'm an old engine and I need the sleep. Perhaps some other night, maybe you could go sleep in the coach yard. Caitlin was upset. Um, Edward, I can't go sleep at the coach yards. It's much too far from the line that I must travel on early in the morning to get to the mainland. Well, pondered Edward. Hmm, perhaps you can uh, take turns with another engine tonight instead of me. That is a spot you can fit on. Uh, how about you, Gordon? Certainly not, huffed Gordon. A proud express engine like me shall sleep in the same spot every night. Uh, it would just be dis disgraceful. Disgusting, put in James. Despicable, huffed Henry. I'll switch sp spots with you, Caitlin, said Emily. After all, I might as well catch up on my latest gossip with Annie and Clarabelle. Besides, I'm a heavy sleeper, and if I get tired, I'll just sleep the night away, even if those two chat along. Why, thank you, Emily, said Caitlin. You are just too kind. At Ofsted Castle... A new party was being held in one of the tea rooms. The elf soldier was most excited. But this meant more and more work for Caitlin, and the more and more tired she became. One day at Wellsworth, Caitlin almost made it to the platform when her water tank went completely dry. And she stopped to a halt. Luckily a water tower was there, and she had a nice long drink of water. Sir Topham Hart was there. Hello, Caitlin, he boomed. You do look tired out. 
panted Keelan. I am, sir. Oh, please, sir. Oh, please. Please tell me you're sending another engine to help me, sir. Calm down, Caitlin, said the fat controller. Don't you worry. Take a breather. I've ordered another engine to come help you with your runs. He was the only one available, and he was from the mainland. We should be here soon, he boomed. Do you think he would help me well? panted Caitlin. Wait and see, boomed the fat controller. Later that day at Napford Station, Caitlin and the fat controller were waiting for the engine to arrive. The engine soon or did. Wait a moment, laughed Caitlin. Is that D199 on your side? Oh dear, the other engines tell me stories about you. The engine huffed. They call you, what was it again? Oh, right, spam cam. Yes, oiled the diesel. And so, what's your point? That will be quite enough, interrupted the fat controller. Caitlin, you must work with spam cam. He was the only engine available. I'm right here, you know, I can hear what you're talking about, said spam cam. He felt hurt. Caitlin, before you two run your hands, you must show him the line, so he knows it well. Afterwards, do your evening runs, and you two sh should be able to sleep at the mainland tonight. Caitlin huffed. Well, come on then, you old so coach, she puffed, and she quickly went puffed away. Spam Cam quickly oiled after her. Wake up, he called. Caitlin sped along the line, with Spam Cam far behind her, trying to catch up. <gasps> Please, he called, wait up. Caitlin later and finally had to stop at a signal. Spam Cam had finally gotten the chance to catch up to Caitlin. <gasps> he panted. Finally, you've stopped. Oh, botheration, huffed Caitlin. You are such a slow coach. You need to be fast if you want to do this job as a really useful engine. Yet again, I doubt you can even do so. They didn't know that Diesel was there on a siding, watching and listening to the whole conversation. Then, on the roadway beside the track, Bertie the bus zoomed up. Hello, Caitlin, said Bertie cheerfully. Who's this you're with here? This, sighed Caitlin, is Pam Cam. While Connor's in the works, I must work with him. Spam Cam, Bertie said. <laughs> he laughed. I know you. You crashed in the back of Tidmid Sheds a long time ago. Thomas has told me that story a billion times. We laugh and laugh whenever we hear it. Birdie was only joking, but Spam Cam wasn't amused. Well, cheerio. Must be off. Can't be late. And Bertie drove away. The signal turned green. Come on, Spam Cam, said Caitlin. It's time to do our evening duties, now that you know the route. And she quickly puffed away. Spam Cam once again oiled behind. While Diesel was making up a very devious plan. Later that evening, before Spam Cam went on his last run for the day, he was at the oil depot to take on some fuel. Diesel was shunting some freight cars nearby. He saw Spam Cam and backed up. Well, 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 said Diesel in his oily voice. If it isn't the one and only Spam Cam. Oh, 
I thought I'd never see you around here again. Uh, hello, Diesel, sighed Spam Cam. He seemed out of breath. I see that Caitlin's working you too hard, he said. Plus, I've seen her treat you very rudely indeed. That is definitely no way to treat such a fine Diesel such as yourself. Spam Cam was cross. You're right, he huffed. It isn't a way to treat any engine. Right, said Diesel. Anyway, here's a plan to get revenge on Caitlin. You and I can work together. I've had enough of her around here anyways. She should go back to the mainland where she belongs. And Devious Diesel told Spam Cam his very naughty plan indeed. Charts, getting their train ready. Ah, oh, where is Diesel? Huffed Caitlin. He's supposed to be here by now, shunting our coaches and getting our trains ready. Spam Cam tried not to smile. He tried to keep his face neutral. Finally, Diesel arrived with Caitlin's coach. Normally, he was uncoupled um, from the coach before Caitlin left, but Caitlin was in a, such a hurry to go, she left before he could be uncoupled. This was a chance for Diesel's plan to continue. Instead of warning someone, he continued on. Spam cam oiled behind. And as they left, Spam Cam quickly buffered up behind Diesel. Caitlin rocketed down the line, with Diesel and Spam Cam behind her. Then, Caitlin realized the force behind her was pushing her. Ah! She cried, Stop pushing me! The branch line was old and hadn't been used for many years. Caitlin was in horror as she plunged through the bushes. Help! she called. Then she neared a shed at the end of the line. Oh, help! and she wailed. Caitlin plunged into the shed. Caitlin lied helplessly over the edge of a cliff. me out back up please cried Caitlin now we won't said an oily voice from behind her we'll push you off instead no cried Caitlin in horror but then the shed above her creaked and it croaked the old brickwood work finally collapsed and the shed caved in And Caitlin fell off the cliff. Caitlin lied, dazed and surprised. 
surprise below the cliff, covered in greenery, dented and very sad indeed. Then Harvey arrived. Ah, it's a wee accident, he said. Don't worry, Caitlin. I'll have you out in no time.